We always have a blast chatting with our guests about all sorts of different topics, but sometimes we go off the rails and dig deeper into their automotive and motorsports pasts. As a bonus, let's go behind the scenes with this pit stop minisode for some extra content that didn't quite fit in the main episode. Sit back, enjoy, and remember to like, subscribe, and support Break Fix on Patreon. This is a very short story, but Paige stopped. We were just stopping, like, because we were in a group, so we want everyone to, like... Are we telling the same story? No, probably not. Don't bring it to two stories. Yeah. I was not stopping. Yeah, you stopped. I was not stopped. I was still going. I was still moving. Okay, but the group was stopping. We were coming to to a a stop. stop. Okay, but I was not... I was not stopped. Sorry, not PC it up. We were coming to a stop, and I went to grab my clutch, and I didn't, and I went for my brake, but I hit my throttle and just went right in the page, <laughs> like like cr- like full on. I'm your riding, bike just like la 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 la, just like doing my thing. We're coming to a stop. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, <laughs> I get pegged in the side of the bike. It was and not the side. I hit your back tire. No, you hit me, and then you went no, off. I did it. This is what sisterhood is and like. The, this the story is, is that us. I hit your back tire, and I bounced off, and I flew into the bush. Kelly went flying into the bushes. Yeah, and I was like wobbled, bush. and I was like, "What the?" And I thought it was one of our guy friends. Like, I thought it was one of our friends, like messing with me. Like, they'll like come up to us and like ride next to us and like kick our bikes or something while we're riding. Ah, so it was the back tire. No, you hit my. I said my bike. Mm-hmm. No, I was a back guy. Well, anyway, but that, yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, oh, wow. And, and I just look over and Kelly's bike just like, wing, mm-hmm. and like it hits a, lands in a bush. She's like, and but we do stuff like this. Like, I don't know. Falling is, if you just relax, just let yourself fall because you won't get hurt, honestly, rather than like trying to wrestle your bike. So that's like what we were like, yeah, just let the bike go. Everyone's like, oh, are you okay? Check you on me. Paige and I are dying laughing. <laughs> I'm like, you idiot <laughs> she's like Paige, like don't check on her she's fine some guy was like tell me to help get your bike up i'm like no no it's fine it happens all the time <laughs> so how how far apart are you guys in age three years yeah ah, just like my daughters are so now I, I know what to look forward to in the future yeah um, we hated each other up until i was in college and kelly yeah. was in high school we really didn't get along. we're very different yeah if you couldn't tell yeah <laughs> i wanted to like be like Paige. she's my older sister i was like man i just want to hang out Paige all the time but she was like cool high school girl she's like don't look at me <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> also though <laughs> kelly would get me in trouble for everything because so then you, you wonder re- why i didn't want to hang out with you because you would reject my love and i was like reject my love i'm gonna get you in trouble i'll tell on you <laughs> and i would i got in trouble for everything <laughs> yeah yeah but then That's she left for college and i was like oh i actually like kind of miss her weird and then but no kelly started doing the things that she would got me in trouble for and then she'd call good. me and be like sis <laughs> i'm drunk <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, who needs help now? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much. And then ever since we've been uh, best friends. Yeah, yeah. You can borrow butter. You want to borrow yeah. a butterfly? We'll send you a sticker. Yeah, you can put. Well, it hey, you know, stickers are hot though. I'm telling you right now. Dude, I'll throw know. some on the race car and. The yeah, bikes. why not? Right? Send us some stickers. Seriously, we love stickers. That. Race car drivers love stickers. Every one of them gives you five extra horsepower. Do you know that? Especially <laughs> a butterfly. I heard. Yeah. Well, but so if we action. were. We're at the min 400 in December and <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of the drivers, his wife came up to our booth and we won't say who, cause I don't know if he ever found out that we put a sticker on his car, but his wife came up to us. She started talking to us and she's like, I love you guys. Like blah, 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 blah. This is so awesome. She's like, I'm going to put a sticker on my husband's car. And we were like, perfect. And so we're like, film her. She like, he stops, he's talking to people. She sneaks around the back, slaps it on the side of his car, but she does, she's like walking by with it. Like, like so sneaky. And she's like, pats it on like runs back over to her booth she's like i did it i did it it's on the left side (laughs) (laughs) she was so she like hung out in her booth for an hour she was awesome that honestly tends to happen to us at events we'll like randomly just fall in love with another woman rider and she like hangs on her booth for the day while her husband goes and shops around (laughs) like yeah we just come hang out with us we're gonna start bringing chairs so everyone can just sit and hang out with (laughs) us Yeah. So yeah. other than bikes, have you guys showed any interest in like any sort of like four-wheel off-roading stuff or even road course or drag racing? You guys have ever done any stores, stuff like that? We haven't. So, I mean, like I said, we used to have a dune buggy. So we had something along those lines that had four wheels and we have two quads that are pretty powerful, but we haven't done anything like street wise or any other sort of UTV or sand rail Can-Am type stuff. We had an unfortunate experience with a Can-Am and in our family and so i feel like that kind of deterred us from sours it yeah 
I don't know. It's hard for me to like get in one and trust it a little like surprise. I actually trust my bike more than I trust a can am. You know, we always say if the opportunity presented itself, like if someone was like, Hey, want to get in this car and drive it around a track? I'd be like, hell yeah. I don't know yeah. what I'm doing. Everyone send it. Watch out, but send it. Like, can you throw all these things out too? How does this work? But like, I would totally say yes. Like I would totally do it. Yeah. So I got to ask, cause we never asked this question in the pit stop. So what do the, what do the McReynolds sisters daily drive? Oh, I drive a 2016 Ford Explorer. <laughs> I had a feeling it was going to be a truck of some sort. Limited four wheel drive. That's yeah. Flint. His name's Flynn. Flynn Ryder, like the character from Tangled. <laughs> I drive a 2011 Ford Escape. Her name's Roxanne because it was the first song that came on my radio when I got her. Actually, she just came from the shop today. She's she's going downhill, but I'm riding her until she blows up. She we've got a, we've had a lot of me and Roxanne have a lot of stories together. <laughs> had a lot of experiences. She's been through more than she's able to go through, and I love her every day for it. <laughs> Both of our first car was a '99 Chevy Tahoe that was lifted, sitting on some fat snow tires. My friends used to call it the Pov, the Page Assault vehicle, because I'm pretty short. I mean, I don't, I'm not super short, but I'm five four. But like in high school. The parking lot was a one way and all the freshmen, ma, like all the parents would be kissing their kids, dropping them off. And I'd be running late for class. So I would just drive over the center divider <laughs> to get to my parking spot. So I wouldn't be late and everyone's honking at me. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, cool. Great. And I just like pull up and her name was Betsy. Yeah. And I think in call we both had her in college mm-hmm. and I don't know. I only had her for two years oh. in high school. I remember in college, like at one point I was like driving a bunch of people home and I think I fit 17 people in the Tahoe, like just like trying to get everyone home safely. And, and then she passes this bad boy down to me and she's like, by the way, you got to clean the seeds, but she's giving, I was like, there is like wine stickiness on this. Like it definitely, okay. this car went to college and came back. And that is like, dramatic. Say it's not true. I <laughs> 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 yeah and and then I brought so we both went to the same high school and so when I came in people were like the tank is back like people knew the car <laughs> we'd like they're like the tank is back because it was this grayish green it looked like a tank it and I was like tank. well this car is she went <laughs> all brought. right so it sounds like somebody's in the market for a new car so I gotta ask the one that makes you go Ooh. oh well <laughs> oh god you're not gonna like her answer <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm, answer I'm really so curious what it is no, it's, this is my, I, let me say it. Okay, let's say it. It's not going to be the car I get. Kelly really wants a Volkswagen bug. Like a vintage Volkswagen bug. That's light blue. You know, I just feel like. We didn't say vintage because you wanted to be eco-friendly. I know I do want to be eco-friendly, but I really want a vintage bug for the look. I feel like it'd be um, cool. There's companies out West, like EV West, where you guys are, that put EVs in those old bugs. So you can have the best of both worlds. You yeah. can have the best of both worlds. Then Kelly was talking about getting a van. I was talking about getting a, like one of those Mercedes vans so we could have it for a company. Oh, a Sprinter? Yeah, that's <laughs> a good yeah. idea. You're yeah. Not gonna, yeah. No. But then no. you got to do it all up. It's got to have a livery on it and the whole thing. That's what I'm yes. saying. My that's dad's genius. like- I'm not going to drive the Sprinter van around every day, like grocery shopping. <laughs> I know a guy that's got one and he turned it into a little house. It's like a super mini yeah, RV. They're we're fantastic. We're speaking Kelly's language right this now. This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. But I'm also like a smaller human. I'm 5'3". And my dad's like, no, you can't even look over. He's like, you're not driving that every day. And I was, <laughs> so that was actually, so no, I was, I was looking at like the RAV4s. Those are pretty cool. Um, but that's, not, but, yeah, but that's, that's all kind of germane. Sexiest car stops you in your tracks and you go, wow. Like, what is that? Re- let's take the eco-friendly stuff off the table. You seen this and you went, wow, what is that? I don't even know. To, I'm not going to lie. I'm not a big car person. Like I will, li- I'm just so like, I will drive whatever works. <laughs> yeah. um, but I guess like, I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't mind a McLaren or something like someone dropped that in my lap in a nice blue. I wouldn't say no. That's, I guess that's probably a car that I would really like. I don't know. What about you? Truck. <laughs> I had a feeling like a really sexy I don't know I don't oh, know that Shelby truck when we went by oh, 
that like, one was. I'm not necessarily like a Ford or Chevy, like Ford or Chevy is better. Like uh, Ford or Chevy, I like them both. I like the insides of Ford, the newer Fords. I like the insides better, but I like the exterior of Chevy's better. But I think Ford did a much better job with their interior and making it look less plastic-y. But yeah, just like a really sexy truck, lifted, some bigger tires. That's... I'm just like hoping for an eco-friendly Kelly's just bug. <laughs> A few different types of girls. And then we're going to have a, you know, then the dream to add on to that, we're going to have a, a McRae Malibu that's going to be, like, oh. we're going to have, like, we want, part of our dream is, we're manifesting this now so it yes. happens, like, a custom Malibu that's, you know, all black that has the McRae butterfly on the side, mm -hmm. and then has our logo, like, in the middle, the center mm -hmm. of the floor, where tow that behind a, a truck, and that's... I feel now like for the Malibu, are you talking about the old like '60s model Malibus? Uh, no, I like the, the new. I'm not gonna lie, I like the yeah. new ones. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be able to wakeboard behind it for sure. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no, I want to do wake center. <laughs> I think they were referring to a boat, right? Not a car. Oh, yeah, I, oh, I picked oh, on yeah, yeah, yeah. I boat, thought you were talking car. So was, when you said Malibu, first thing, because being a car guy, first thing came to my mind was Malibu car. Uh, so, oh, yes, I'd love yeah. me a sexy truck, and then I'd like a nice 2020 Chevy Malibu mm -hmm. on a trailer behind it. <laughs> yeah, everybody aspires to own a rental car, Dan, 100%. Like, no, seriously? that's why I asked if, that's why I was asking, like, the 60s, the old 60s Malibus oh, are badass. Oh, oh, no. So anyway, okay. all right, boat, 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 boat. Yeah. Not huge car girls, big boat girls. <laughs> nice, I like this. I, I can like definitely this. talk about boats and jet skis, but I'll drive my slug bug. I don't mind that. <laughs> Kelly would drive a cardboard box if it had two tires and a steering yeah, wheel. Yeah, like, pretty much. She would run it to the grocery store. It doesn't even need tires. She just she <laughs> like would the run it like the Flintstones, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, and Kelly, someone could pull that. This is like the difference between us. Someone could pull that in front of our house, and I'd be like. And Kelly would be like, oh, cool. <laughs> I'm like the thrift shop, very bare minimum with those things. Paige, it's definitely a little bougier out of the two of us. And you like quality. I know. I like what I like. You like what you like. Yeah. Being out in California with the expensive <laughs> fuel places, you were saying you wouldn't mind a lifted truck and everything. That's got to be painful with your guys' fuel prices. Now you're, you know I want to go eco-friendly. You're not <laughs> wrong. I'm yeah. excited. Just to fill up my Ford Explorer. It cost me like $87 today. Yeah. Nuts. That's why I run with my box. <laughs> 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 the only gas she has to buy is extra kale from the grocery store. <laughs> That's her Nice. Kale. Because you guys are in California, and California has recently passed a bunch of the regulations where they want, within the next like seven years, to where they want like no small engine stuff to be gas powered anymore. How do you guys think that is going to hurt the off-road community out there? Because especially in SoCal, there's a huge like motocross and off-road community. So I mean, luckily we're not in the business of making bikes and we just have to really maintain our bikes so we can keep them forever. Keep them forever. Um, what's interesting is we actually, we were riding last week and someone pulled oh, up yeah. with a, an electric KT. I'm oh, sorry, my dog's crying. What? Come here. And you a, get on they the had an electric KTM and it sounded it sounded so like an RC weird. it sounded like an yeah. RC car. They were going up a hill a, like a pretty well-known hill climb and it literally just sounded like someone wee, charging up their RC wee, car wee. and I was like oh man I know. But you know I think in terms of how that's going to affect the industry it's so hard to say. I mean I'm curious I don't want to like commit to saying something but like I'm just curious to see what actually happens in the next five to seven years because Southern California is a huge hub for motocross and off-roading and there's mm -hmm. so many very well-known you know racetracks and riders and races down here and so I'm very curious to see what happens in the next five to six years but like I said luckily we're we're not in the business of making bikes we're in the business of making gear and I hope in the next seven years that we do enough brand awareness where people all over the U.S. are buying our gear. So yeah, I guess then maybe we and selfishly like our knees will probably give out by then. We won't be able to ride anymore anyway. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> I've got our, I've got arthritis, so yeah. I'm already down, I mean, going downhill. We hope it doesn't affect the industry. I mean, I would hate to see that change, but I don't think we're like educated enough on like what's going to happen to even have much of a perspective on it. But I really hope it doesn't change the industry, obviously, because it has such a special place in our heart. And it's really, it's changed our lives, not to be dramatic, but it's really, you well. yeah, well, <laughs> But oh, we've truly grown from being a part of this community, and you know, I, I hope not to see it change. I hope it changes in a good way. But. Well, I mean, luckily you guys with apparel, it does, it'll transcend whether it be gas or electric. 
the guy that you said you guys saw riding the electric bike from observation aspect, how do you think it did compared to the gas powered ones? Honestly, I mean, he went up the hill. If I had earplugs in or like couldn't hear, it would have looked and sound, you know, it would have just seemed like he was riding a gas powered bike. So I think on that sense, it's awesome. But I just, the sound, you know, you just really, you, I love that sound. Like you want yeah. sound. We were laughing. We're like, man, could you imagine a supercross where everyone is on electric bikes and he's like, it's time for monster energy. And then it's like, King, like, and then it's like all the electric bike start and it just sounds like a giant RC track going off. I'm like, I, it just feels like it doesn't match, but. Yeah. That or it'll sound like an old slot car track. Yeah, that or that too. And you know, and then it started, you start to wonder like, okay, well, if that is the direction that we're headed and that's only in Southern California, what does that mean for Supercross? You know, where do they have to have separate bikes just to race in California versus other states? And do people love riding in it? Because at least I can speak for myself. Like, I love the sound of my gas bike, but at the end of the day, if my only option is ride an electric bike or ride, don't ride at all, I'm riding an electric bike because I love riding enough to where I, it doesn't matter what powers the bike. I would like to think that if it does end up going in that direction, that a lot of other people would feel similarly, where it's just like, we're going to keep, you know, everyone talked hella shit about EV cars and then Teslas came out and now everyone owns a Tesla. So (laughs) it's like, when it's something is such a new and abrupt change, people are really hesitant to be open-minded to it. But when you get to a point where you don't have a choice or it's really cool, like, is it really that big of a deal? Yeah. I don't know. And hopefully if it does come to that, the science at that point hopefully it does sound just give me the sound i don't yeah i don't care if my bike's electric i don't care like sure whatever just give me the sound back (laughs) same power sounds yeah so for the sound two stroke or four stroke okay i'm not gonna lie i kind of like the sound of a two stroke i mean yeah like think of our like jet skis like like you get that just like ooh. the the original brat brat (laughs) <laughs> right, right right yeah i feel like the four stroke though it like hits your soul it's a lot deeper where like two strokes like a soprano wee, wee. <laughs> I, don't know. I like four stroke i like yeah. a i like a symphony of them both together <laughs> <laughs> well, so for me because i'm gonna show my age a little bit but i grew up riding two strokes when they started switching over the four strokes and the motocross and everything i was very not liking it and especially having ridden some four strokes for me i guess because I was so used to riding two strokes. The four strokes were great because I had the bottom end torque, but I was so used to on a two stroke having it wound out and knowing that power curve, I missed it a lot. So I was happy to see they started coming back with two strokes. See, but four strokes, we don't have to carry special gas oil mix. We can just go to the gas station and fill up because we ride with a couple two strokes and it's if they run out of gas, we're like, Sucks sit out you. a lot of sun, yeah. start pushing. Yeah. We'll come back with a rope. Like we're at least for us, like where they have to carry their own stuff in their backpack, where at least for yeah. us, we're like, we can just pop on over to the gas station. They got to be like a mad scientist with their oil in the middle of the trail. I'm like, oof, that looks rough. I'll meet you at the... <laughs> same, the same will be true of all those bikes that are EVs too. You'd be sitting there going, well, I guess got to wait till the sun comes back up. <laughs> right? Like, I well, know. that's the end of our ride today, guys. Looks like we're going to camp here. We'll yeah. like, get back on it tomorrow morning. I don't know what the right answer is. Horses. That's the great that's thing the, about Horses are the right answer. That's the right <laughs> No, horse is the wrong Hot, answer. Every day. the legs. <laughs> <laughs> well down at Hatfield McCoy's that was a great thing because a lot of the gas stations in there had pre-mixed two-stroke fuel and being able to just ride up to a gas station and get pre-mixed two-stroke was great so I don't know if they still do but when I was down there last time they had pre-mixed two-stroke sitting there waiting for you that sounds like a mountain town thing I <laughs> non-California I you got it <laughs> I don't think they do that here in Southern California you like, hey, good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, right. I think the actual off-road trails would keep those communities in business. Because I think that's the only thing people go down there for anymore. Because most of the well, coal they, mines they're not mining in there anymore. So that's for sure. Yeah. Those they're old coal, coal towns now. Joke. Yeah, so. Most of the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All new coal mines starting up tomorrow. It's <laughs> wait for it. Uh, but on that note, it's getting on yep. seven o'clock your guys' time. So we we intruded on your dinner more than likely. So I'm sure they're tired and hungry, Dan. So he he will talk you off and talk to you till tomorrow morning if we don't if we let him go. I do appreciate you guys coming on. I think it was an absolute blast. It was actually a pleasure to meet you guys and be able to talk to you guys outside of the booth and the chaos of the mid 400. Yep. So it's a lot of fun. 
again thank you so much for having us this one we had so much fun we love getting to meet people talk about the industry so thank you again for the opportunity absolutely and if you guys ever want to come back you're more than welcome to it so uh we'll keep you posted if we have any other episode ideas as well we'll keep you posted (laughs) good all right i'm gonna i'm gonna extend it a little bit farther uh, real quick if you guys pay attention to our website if you guys are interested in getting into a car on track Pay attention to some of the events we go to, like our summer bash, and we're welcome to come out to the East Coast, try out. Uh, You're gonna have track. to fly them out, fool. They ain't just gonna walk, hop and jump over here. <laughs> they might not want to wear. They might not want to wear a mask. They, <laughs> if that's true, that's true. I was just in San Diego, and I was like, "Wait, what? What, what just got lifted? We're, we're back to normal again? Holy cow! This is amazing." I know, yeah. it's so wild. We so. both work at breweries part time, and oh, didn't nice. wear masks all week, and it was just like, I'm like, oh, I don't remember that customers could see my face though, because sometimes I have a resting bitch face. Like when I'm just like looking for a number, like I'm not like like I'm just <laughs> looking for a number, and so now I have to remember that people can see like my entire face so i'm like i can have to be a little bit more smiling <laughs> on Thanks. that bombshell i will let you guys get back to it dan i'll see you nice soon meeting you guys <laughs> nice <laughs> meeting you bye all right later if you like what you've heard and want to learn more about gtm be sure to check us out on www.gtmotorsports.org you can also find us on instagram at grand touring motorsports Also, if you want to get involved or have suggestions for future shows, you can call or text us at 202-630-1770 or send us an email at crewchief at gtmotorsports.org. We'd love to hear from you. Hey, everybody. Crew Chief Eric here. We really hope you enjoyed this episode of Break Fix, and we wanted to remind you that GTM remains a no annual fees organization, and our goal is to continue to bring you quality episodes like this one at no charge. As a loyal listener, please consider subscribing to our Patreon for bonus and behind-the-scenes content, extra goodies, and GTM swag. For as little as $2.50 a month, you can keep our developers, writers, editors, casters, and other volunteers fed on their strict diet of Fig Newtons, Gummy Bears, and Monster. Consider signing up for Patreon today at www.patreon.com forward slash GT Motorsports. And remember... Without fans, supporters, and members like you, none of this would be possible.